Hey everyone, you're tuned into InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy. Join us as we talk about anything and everything. All the stuff that makes life interesting. So let's get to it. Hey everybody and welcome to InfoQuench. I'm your host Jeff. And I'm Amy. And this episode we're going to be talking about post-pandemic predictions predictions that's right that's right so the last episode we talked about mental health and gave some tips around looking after your mental health throughout this ordeal we're all going through together yes and, and thanks for listening everybody who listened to that by yeah, the way yeah and lots of positive really? feedback on that episode yeah. so thank you for that too this episode we uh as promised and i think a few episodes back jeff and i sort of brainstormed on some predictions of what we think is you know what will happen or what will possibly happen what could be some of the changes that we'll see after the this pandemic or Mm -hmm. as a you know as uh, as an outcome of it and we're also trying to keep this uh you know that these predictions are more on the positive end trying to keep things positive again and that whole idea of mental health so hope you enjoyed this episode listen through um let us know if you agree with our predictions and maybe if you have some of your own we'd love to hear about them on social media okay so. there's absolutely no question that things are going to change things have changed and they're not gonna go back to normal for a very long time and that is hard for a lot of people a lot of people don't like when their lives are changed in any way they like the whole idea of a you know common thing that they do every time every day well the change is uncomfortable for people for sure and you know one of the things i i would like to point out is just that you know everything with covid19 i mean it's devastating it's devastating across the world and so we're we're going to talk about some of the positive things but that's not to you know discount the the many negative outcomes of what's going on with this pandemic but and as a whole that is the kind of perspective that people should have during a pandemic or Uh, you know a a public health emergency is you know in order to to stay you know sane and have a clear mind it's good to have positive outlook on life and on uh it's just everything well i tend to try to find the humor in just about anything in even the most you know dire situations i see some people are getting you know uh grief on social media for posting memes about different things but i think you know a good laugh is good for the soul it's good for boosting our immune system and it's uh you know it's you know i i think it's if it's meant to just sort of spread joy and laughter and yeah. and, and try to keep spirits light sometimes wouldn't you not agree? in a vicious uh or you know or yeah. malicious manner then people need to take it and the- people have to stop attacking one another but the thing is it's like even though laughs they take time to sort of get used to take Saturday Night Live, for example. Their first uh, episode yeah. after Let's talk was, about that for was a pretty crappy. And then the second one was great. It was like day glow, yeah, the fir- like it was like It was literally comparison. like the first episode of SNL where they did, you know, everybody was doing the skits from their home. It was like watching somebody film on a 1980s, camcorder right versus right uh you know uh, you know the or polaroid versus today's uh you know uh, sorry one week later all of a sudden the production of all of those skits went way up there's you know even the quality of the writing and everything well we talked about that a lot of celebrities are home and are not yeah. filming movies at this point so they've, things to do. they've made use of make celebr- people laugh they had brad pitt on uh you know yeah and as uh, anthony fauci remember that yeah it was yeah. And, and doing a thank you and so yeah if you're not if you're not uh watching snl give it a chance because they're trying like just said, like everybody else they are but the first week yeah, it was a bit of a dud. I, I felt like it was a bit of a dud. But last, Mostly. but last week I was really impressed, and I'm looking forward. We're recording this on uh, on Saturday, Saturday night, Saturday night May second, and uh, we're live looking, looking, from well, Saint Saturday. John. It's, it's Info Quench. <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> so looking forward to what they what they bring out tonight. So right. Um, but it, but yeah, the world's adapting, and sometimes it takes and it's a little important bit. to stay positive. It's it's important to at least try to stay positive because sometimes it's not always possible. So let's talk but about some of these predictions. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So um, yes. So positive post-pandemic predictions. In other news, alliteration's at an all-time high. Yes. Positive <laughs> post-pandemic predictions. This first one I had, and I'm not doing a numbered list because I just, I'm not going to torture myself with Jeff messing up my numbered list. Mm-hmm. But 
Um, the first one I think is probably obvious. Uh, handshakes are going to be a thing of the past. Right. And the, the whole European, you I was know, never kiss a fan on the of cheek. Anyway. I think that'll be gone too. I like was the never... whole the whole idea, the whole idea that, oh, when that person shook my hand, boy, they did it so rigorously. rigorously. They must really like me. Oh, the me. whole idea of the firm, the whole, hand, like, the firm handshake I mean, during the job on. interview. Yeah, I mean, that like, was always one of the, you know, one of the, if you're, that's, if that's you're giving somebody now. advice on a job interview, you'd be like, make sure you give a firm handshake. Now when you're Not in the, anymore. now when you're in the business workplace, you can just wave from six feet away. <laughs> I think bows, like a head bow, you know, yeah. I think that'll probably be more common form of greeting. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how greetings evolve and how we change change things up to adapt. Because mm-hmm. um, it, it, things are going to change in that respect. Because, I mean, okay, uh, traditionally human beings have have greeted one another in one way or another, and it's been sh- handshakes for I don't know how long, like fifties, would you say? Probably, maybe oh, even I, earlier. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Either, I'd have to but, research that, honey. Yeah, I know. And 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 we don't have time for research right now. This is this is off the floor here. This is this is Saturday night info quench. So number well, no, no, I'm not not numbering these. My my next well, item is around that's, working. That's your style. You you want to number things. Number them. Number <laughs> I, one. I think we're going to see people. Uh, a what lot of businesses this? evolving towards working from home. Oh, I think that people, you know, are are when possible. When possible, well, I think that people will look at it and see, you know, what types of of jobs or tasks are effectively done from home and which ones aren't. Um, like, and there'll also maybe be a reluctance for people to come to work sick. Whereas I know that the culture has often been, you know, if you're sick, you still push yourself through it. If you've got the sniffles or whatever, mm-hmm. um, even if you're contagious, if you're not hovered over a you know, a toilet worshiping the porcelain gods, you're usually at your desk. I think that that's going to change a little bit. I think that people are going to be a little bit more... Hugging the porcelain gods. (laughs) Where are you going with this? You've never heard that saying I have. Okay. Well, I think that... So I think that people, you know, when they're sick, they may may realize that, hey, you know what, I, I may be well enough to do some work, but I'll do that work from home and not subject my coworkers to, you know... Uh, catching whatever absolutely I, may I think what what's going to happen is if you can work at home and be uh you know do your job properly because uh, that stuff's being monitored there's no question people well, are, yeah i'm sure private enterprise especially is, are, are starting to see you know what what opportunities they may be to reduce overhead costs mm-hmm. and they see staff can be effective in in working from home and not having office space um you know you, we could see a, a complete uh, evolution of that. And obviously, there are certain positions and, and tasks right. and, that require, uh, you know, in in person, uh, you know, reporting to an office or, or collaboration and that sort of thing. But yeah, no, I, I think it'll be fascinating to see how how businesses evolve and and what businesses decide to be like be okay with their employees working from home. That, well, they've that also will be different. It, this is sort of forced all businesses into the ultimate experiment, right? And yeah. so they can they can see what's effective and what's not, and they'll be able to use that information. Here's a to question: though. Going forward, do you think a lot of these, uh, you know, predictions or things that will happen with businesses during COVID nineteen, the stuff that's going to happen, that's going to change? Do you think it will continue once COVID nineteen, once we have a vaccine, once we have everything? Do you think a lot of business will be like, hey, you know what? It's still a really good idea to be six feet away from one another. Well, it depends. I mean. They may see the idea of, hey, you know what, we've reduced overhead costs and you're effectively working from home. So yeah. we're going to encourage staff who want to continue to do that to work yeah. from home. Yeah. And if you also add into that the fact that, you know, you and I are lucky enough that we're both still working full time, um, you outside the home and me in the home, but uh, our son is home from school. So, you mm-hmm. know, there's that added challenge of trying to fit that into the workday and having flexible right. work hours and Which trying to, um, you know, I, I, I end up starting my day earlier, uh, ending it later and, uh, you know, fitting in extra hours where I need to. But if you think about in the long term, when, our, you know, kids are back to school or back in daycares, then people working from home who are doing it effectively will do so even more effectively once childcare is back in place, we've noticed that that, that uh, our son, who's uh, seven, 
enjoys working on the computer lately you know like they sent home our our like school board has sent home uh you know actually it's more like kind of educational computer games is what they're playing that's why he loves it so much so if they continue with that thread in the educational spectrum i think that it'll be really really uh beneficial to children to well, they, they love the well. They love the play-based activities, mm-hmm. and it'll be interesting to see what happens here. You know, we're we're recording out of St. John, New Brunswick, in Canada, and we are lucky enough that as of today, which is May second, we have no active cases of COVID nineteen. And no one in the hospital. And, yes, no no active cases. Everybody oh, yeah. who had so contracted it, we had one hundred and eighteen people who had contracted. Uh, you know, the virus in our province. They've all since recovered. So we're. You know, we realize we still need to be cautious and that this is just where we're at at this point, but today we'll celebrate where we're at. But where we, you know, where we may be in September when schools are due back to be, Mm -hmm. you know, kids back in actual school buildings and reporting in person, it'll be interesting to see what happens there and, you know, and how they develop, uh, you know, continuity of learning in in terms of uh, online options and, and, and all of that. Um, Another prediction. I think that we're going to see more stores move to just offering more delivery options and curbside pickup and online. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of local companies, uh, local businesses evolve quickly to offer that to their patrons because they want you know want to give them a safe way to still um, do business, but right. do it from a safe distance. So. Uh, I think that having those options, those convenient options, now that they've, they've sort of had to evolve and do those quite quickly, um, you know, just as as a necessity to keep their businesses open, I think that a lot of those will keep going even after the pandemic. And they'll still have those online options, which is a great Why way not? for us to continue to support local, which is another prediction I have, is I think that people have really come to appreciate now, we the importance all, yeah, of local business. I agree. And particularly when we're looking at closing borders and restricted travel and what that means and when we're depending on products from outside our country or even outside of our city. We've always our, been our city. very supportive of the local like businesses, uh, but even more so now. You know, not just like at this time in history because in time or weather or whatever, because, uh, you know, local businesses need our help now more than ever. To right. stay afloat, and but I'm hoping that that'll sort of continue on. That people it will. will think, you know, well, for us it will, anyways. You know that they're uh, if we don't support these businesses, they may not be around. So yeah. making that decision of you know being really yeah. con- conscientious about what you can buy locally and, and making the decision to buy locally. And it's, and it's not just the businesses either, but it's also the local scene, like musicians and stuff, supporting them. I know Bandcamp had two opportunities to uh help local musicians with no like Bandcamp took no money from the artists right so maybe you could explain what Bandcamp is for Band, well Bandcamp is just is, is like a online platform for musicians to exhibit their music and sell it as well and when they do sell their music Bandcamp takes a certain percentage I think it's 10 or 12 percent of the of the earnings uh front right straight from the local or from the musicians. Kind of like an Etsy model. It's like an Etsy model for, mu- for music. But, you know, honestly, like even a lot of uh, musicians and bands have said that the model that Bandcamp came up with was very fair to everyone involved, which is great. Oh, that's anyway. awesome. And I think, you know, the idea, the importance of arts in our community, particularly when mm-hmm. people have been isolated and how, uh, you know, we see musicians and comedians and entertainers all find different ways to offer their, you know, mm-hmm. their services online right. so that we can continue to have that because that's so important in terms of just maintaining our own mental health and, and uh, you know, giving us an something else to focus on aside from the news and and everything Mm -hmm. else that's going on in life. And so I think the importance of arts and culture has come more to the forefront and hopefully that, you know, appreciation of, uh, will, will continue beyond the the pandemic. Right. Um, I think that, you know, bad breath, BO, heavy perfume is going to be less of an issue because we're all going to be a little more distanced. (laughs) 
<laughs> Eat up on the garlic and not worry um, about your, you know, everyone being. I've always know. loved the smell of garlic, to be honest, but uh, that's just me, maybe. <laughs> but, um, but no, but I think even, you know, I've always worried about things being stuck in my teeth. Well, I'll be like, can people see that from six feet away? I don't know. Well, uh, I don't know how also long. Also, I can't after, touch my face, so I can't pick it out of my teeth anyway. How long after <laughs> the COVID 19, uh, you know, passes and we have a vaccine and everybody's vaccinated? The, the six foot thing will be done. Well, the, the six the, foot, I, I mean, I think that in terms of social distancing, I think we'll all have an awareness that we just will never let go of about, you know, the risk of contagious, uh, you know, whether it's just the common colds or, or it's seasonal influenza. Mm -hmm. I think we'll all be aware of that. And I think that will cause a lot of people to continue to maintain social distance. And I think it'll be ingrained in a lot of people because they've been practicing it for so long. Well, yes. And I don't know that it's a bad thing. No, it's it's, it's actually, we talked about this, uh, and your dad actually brought this issue up, which was brilliant. He said a lot of people just won't be getting sick as much as they used to because people will not be getting as sick as often because they're not going to be so close to one another. Well, the idea of just even hand washing. And people will be washing their hands like you know, crazy. Understanding the length of time that's required for hand washing. And um, I, I think I've mentioned this on previous episode, but I worked in a healthcare setting uh, for, for a couple of years. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, there were always signs posted around the length of time you should wash your hands. But 20 I think for, for a lot of people, um, that wasn't a known a known thing. It was known mm -hmm. that you should wash your hands often, but not, you know, now we've got, it's very systematic and people have a better understanding of, uh, you know, how viruses are spread. So yeah, I think we're going to see less contagious. I don't think that the educate or the, the public has been as educated as it is now when it comes to public contagions. Like or contagions in general. Right. Well, and it, you know, uh, Jeff and I just watched. Oh yeah. If you Netflix have uh, Netflix, and we watched it on Nef Netflix in Canada, but it's probably on the U.S. version as well. It's um, explained. It's called uh, Coronavirus Explained. It's only twenty six minutes. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, just a special docu series. One, it's just one episode. Super concise. Yeah, it's, but it's very current. I think it must have been just created at yeah. the end of March, maybe or sometime in April. Um, but it gives a great understanding of coronavirus. But it also gives uh, a historic relevance in comparison to other uh, viruses as right, well. Right, well, with the nineteen eighteen pandemic. But yeah, also, which is it, great. It leads to the idea that you know this could be the first of more to come. Yeah. That you know there are a lot of viruses circulating out there. So whatever methods we develop now, and we should, I guess, you know. Um, learn from this and it'll maybe help us become more equipped should something else come down the line so even if we were vaccinated against um you know this particular uh, sars you know uh coronavirus yeah. 2 or sars 2 yeah um covid 19 that causes covid 19 we may have a uh, you know something else that evolves down mm -hmm. the road so all of these practices will serve us well um i think that we're going to have less issues with close talkers Oh yes, and we all know one. It's that Seinfeld yeah, the episode. The Seinfeld right? episode. The close talker. I think we'll, you know, people who um, we all know get one, into the personal space, get into our personal bubble. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that th that'll be less likely. I think we'll be less likely to get rammed with shopping carts in the grocery store. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, would I just think maybe they'll keep those keep arrows on space. the floor forever, and we'll always <laughs> have like only one way we can go down those aisles. Well, it does. It does make things a lot more systematic, doesn't it? You know, it makes things a little bit more, uh, you know, quick. I think claustrophobics are going to be happier in general. Same. I same think they're with, going to have more space. Yeah, same with introverts. They're going to yeah. be, they're just going to be, well, a lot of people, it, it makes no difference whether or not we have a pandemic going on because they just didn't go out anyways. Well, you know, a lot of times like when, Which you makes know, sense. Uh, at the end of a work day, I work on a, a, a multi-level building, so we, I would have to take the elevator. Um I could take the stairs, but I'm, you know, a, a pretty high. <laughs> I take so, but you would jam on the elevator at the end of the workday. And if you happen to be going, you know, at a busy time, there your elevator would be crammed with people. And you sort of just sort of fit all in. But now I think that'll be much that different. That won't be happening. Um, I know that they're doing studies and um, different office setups in Europe and, and trying to figure out, you know, just having 
spots on the floor on the in the elevator where people should stand Mm -hmm. it forces people to keep the distance um you know and when the elevator opens up the doors and there's too many people on it you just wait for the next one or uh or take the stairs although the stairwells too could be congested but so i i think that'll be interesting just Mm -hmm. um how that evolves, whether planes will adapt. We planes have you know, already adapted. Whether adapted in terms of having everybody wear masks, whether eventually they'll limit seating so that Abs- there's more I space. I think that's coming. Um, can you imagine if it was? You know, when you think about sitting on a plane now, uh, at, when we would go on flights. I mean, how many times would you sit and you would have, literally have a stranger's leg up against yours, right? right. And wondering who's going to get the armrest. Um, that's so over. when you think about how jam packed we've been. That's not just planes, that's trains, that's like subways. Subways. Subways would be another yeah. scenario. So I wonder, you know, planes though, I mean it's huge fuel costs per flight. Mm-hmm. So they need to maximize the number of passengers they have. So it'll be interesting to see what they do in terms if of you look, infection control. I feel that if and, you and look, with the washrooms too, the shared oh, washrooms and oh, those yeah. types of uh, traveling arrangements. If you look at the uh, the aspects of society that have been affected by COVID-19 the most, for example, the, um, the old folks homes or, you know, whatever, uh, they're so close to one another. The old folks homes. (laughs) You're such a maritimer. But anyway, (laughs) they're so close to one another and that therein lies the problems that they had with, as far as the, the, well, they're also incredibly susceptible to this inter- yeah. particular well, virus that but. too but but the fact that they are so close to one another you know their rooms or their beds were like next right. to one another any kind in many of communal cases. living arrangement and, yeah. and when you have caregivers who are that are, get, that are getting no help <laughs> let's just let's just be honest uh we're you know enough. movie theaters we may mm-hmm. see a little bit of difference there we may mm-hmm. see uh some difference in the seating arrangements um I mentioned a local focus. I think we're going to see more of a local focus on travel as well. I think people will be less likely for quite a while to want to get on a plane. Yes. Um, to, you know, and depending on what the screening measures are in different countries, we'll sort of see right. these different border controls set up, mm-hmm. which could delay entry when you're when you're traveling. So it'll be interesting to see how difficult it is to actually travel and get through borders right. after this passes. Of course, we know about less pollution but maybe there'll be less banging of elbows at dinner tables there will be for sure <laughs> so when I, I reference you know when you're kind of you're sitting next to all these people at a, at a large uh, a large dinner maybe the, there'll be a conscientious effort for uh, seats to be more spread out mm-hmm. I can see that mosh happen. pits Mo- well, thing just of the con- past. concerts in general <laughs> there's been well, any, well, every single concert that was going to happen in the next year has been canceled. I think, so, well, they'll just look, they'll look different, right? They'll look different. Well, they're already in, where Where was it? Lithuania. They, they, they're on the cusp of like innovative ideas when it comes to COVID-19, I feel. Because one of the things that they wanted to do was take their downtown and make it completely like a giant open air cafe, basically. Like chair, chairs and tables everywhere and people just relaxing in right in the streets where automobiles used to be well you know it's great it's we've we've often enjoyed pedestrian yeah. friendly cities so this is sort of forcing that move towards and they've also started having concerts but not with people standing watching but in cars so people are in their cars watching these that's live interesting because that's how they've opened up church services here yeah. in our in our provinces yeah. they've started by saying people can participate in a church service by being in a car no, it's it's bonkers different, no question, but it's innovative. Hey, we and used it's to creative. watch, uh, you know. Oh, well, I guess we still the drive-through movies are set up that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, no more patty cake with strangers. No more patty cake. No. <laughs> These are things Absolutely. that jotted down. Even uh, awkward home home gatherings. I put this. I sort of as I was making my notes. I'm thinking. I guess with kids' birthday parties when you're going to the you know, the homes of the parents of your, your kids, uh, friends. Yeah. So, I mean, we, when you go to kids birthday parties and you've got to go to the houses of the, you know, mm-hmm. kids in your, your kids class <laughs> and you, you don't know the parents and it's just <laughs> awkward. Right. Or things like baby showers might look a little different. Uh, wedding showers, all those, th- you know, those weddings, home, weddings uh, themselves are going to look different. <clears throat> funerals, oh, well, yes, that's right. Funerals are going to look so different. A lot of funerals are now going to be virtual in a way, or 
uh, well for the media out. time frame or at least in the, I think it'll be just more spread out when you think about yeah. um, we have visitation hours I know it was a tradition that you know we do it here in North America where we would have two hour visitation sessions with the family so that that in itself could look different it's a whole different way of looking at the world makeup is going to look different I think with the mar- or lack wearing, thereof. A, wearing of masks I think lipstick sales are going to be down it's all going to be about the eyes it's That's my prediction. Invest in your eyeliner and mascara. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all going to be about the eyes. Because everybody's going to be wearing a mask. That's right. <laughs> um, it m- reminds me of back in when they stopped smoking in the uh, in the bars, and all of a sudden it was like we got to focus more on our makeup because they can actually see us. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I don't wear makeup, so no, I never I even really thought of that. It's but more you're of right. A, um, food samples. You know, when they do That's those, I, I, don't think, I don't think we'll see that much Or anymore. alcohol samples at the liquor store. Right. Any kind of samples, really. Um, you know, uh, maybe less flyers. We had, you know. Um, Limited people in businesses as well. That trying would, on clothes. Yeah, trying on clothes. You know, when you're in a clothing store or, or, or any kind of trying on. You'll probably still be able to do that, but it'll be a different, uh, different I think y- experience. Yard sales will be down. Well, they haven't been yet. I, don't, I, <laughs> I know. I, I guess everyone's decluttering, right? So you know what I can't believe, uh, and I, it's, it goes, you know, online. People selling stuff online, getting people to come to their home. There are some people though who are out of work now, and they it's need to. It's true, and that and that is it's helping true. them supplement income. So, but it's still not safe right now, anyways. No, Maybe I it mean will it's be later on down the road. Ideally, yeah, it's not the best time to do is it. Is this and, the time to buy that, like you know, that mug that says "World's Greatest Dad"? <laughs> Yes, honey. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, speaking of world's greatest dad, Jeff turns a new year. <laughs> you don't know how old I'm going to be? I know. I was just trying to save your <laughs> listeners from... <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay. Jeff will be 48 tomorrow yeah, 48. on May 3rd. So happy birthday early, Jeff. Thank you very much, honey. Um, I wouldn't want to spend it with anybody <laughs> else but you. I think there'll be less door-to-door soliciting. Yeah. Whether they're the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or just or Rogers people, Rebel. or so, yeah, anybody trying to sell things, um, people pushing pamphlets in public places. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that we'll see. You know what I'd like that. to see a, a dim, something diminish is junk mail. All these flyers. Why don't well, yeah, just make I just them all I was digital? mentioning around flyers earlier, yeah. and I I feel like even like the you know the plastic bag flyers I think have already been stopped in our area. Oh, um, those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, drove me crazy. Uh, amu- amusement park rides. Yeah. I think that they'll change. When you think about being, you know, sometimes you're jammed in with a stranger in a in a seat for a roller coaster or the that'll Ferris change. wheel. That, right. That'll change. Disney Disney's already closed right what now. What about those awkward waltzes at junior high dances? Yeah, they were all, well, I mean, <laughs> when I was a kid, they were... They were it were very awkward and a loss of space. Now the girl the or the guy just has to be like, oh, social distancing. Can't do can't, it. Can't dance with you. <laughs> That's true. Um, more cleaning at gyms. I know I've been to gyms and somebody gets off a piece of equipment and it's just like dripping with their sweat and they have mm-hmm. not. I think people will be more conscientious to clean behind them. Right. Behind themselves when they are finished with equipment. So that'll be nice. Yeah. Less lice. Yeah, you know, slice, that'll when you be good. get school age kids, get, slice yeah. is uh, you know a very big issue. You get the the notice from the school, lice is going around, and it always uh, makes you uh, yeah. you know cringe a little bit. I think any kind of um, it would be interesting. Lice may stop altogether. Yeah, you never know. I could. I, I don't know. I it's don't, possible. I don't know how. I don't know what the verdict is on lice. <laughs> In respect of COVID nineteen, that's a it covers most of the things I jotted down. But the last thing that I had jotted down was that I think that my main prediction for after this post after the pandemic, my post pandemic prediction is that we're and maybe even now we have it more gratitude for everything. Well, especially family yeah. life. I mean, everybody who is at home and has a family, you know, like the nucleus family nuclear family is uh or whatever whatever kind of family you have you're close you're you're do you're together all the time so and you can't help but get to know your family a little bit better and what's wrong with that i not every family's perfect i realize that but at the same time even the imperfect families are worth being around 
(laughs) (laughs) Well, whether it's gratitude for your, you know, your family, uh, you know, just the little things in life that Mm -hmm. all of a sudden we haven't been able to enjoy, you know, the visits to our local businesses and restaurants and uh, gatherings with friends. So I think that we've just all got to share gratitude for right. for those things. I absolutely and, agree. And, and speaking and of look, enjoying they'll, things, they'll look different, but they'll yeah. they'll come back and I they'll know. come back in a different way. So but. chin up, people, chin up. And in speaking speaking of enjoying things, I hope you enjoyed this podcast and all the other ones we recorded. And hopefully it inspired you to maybe think about some of the positive things that are going to come out of all of this chaos, because there will be some good things. So we're going to get through this. So stay safe, everybody. Stay safe, everybody. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can catch up on past episodes at infoquench.com. Or just about anywhere else you get your podcasts. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And help spread the word about InfoQuench. Till next time. time.